Chapter 6. Programming and Debugging. In this section of the Radiant Introductory Training Series, we will discuss the general flow for programming a device, and debugging it on physical hardware. Chapter 6 consists of four sections. In the first section of the chapter, Programming Basics, we will review the general flow for programming a device using Radian. In section 2 of the chapter, Device Programming with Programmer, we are going to discuss Radian's programmer tool, and how it can be used to program a device. In the third section of the chapter, Debugging with Reveal Inserter, we will introduce Radian's Reveal Inserter tool, and discuss how it can be used to add debug cores to a design. Finally, in the fourth section of the chapter, called Debugging with Reveal Analyzer and Controller, we will discuss Reveal Analyzer and Controller, and how it can be used. Chapter 6, Section 3. Debugging with Reveal Inserter. In this section of the video series, we will be reviewing the general flow for debugging a Radiant project using Reveal Inserter, and Reveal Analyzer and Controller. Once a device has been programmed, it can be debugged using Radiance Reveal Inserter and Reveal Analyzer and Controller tools. Reveal Inserter is used to add debug cores to a project, and Reveal Analyzer and Controller are used to observe debug cores after they have been added. Before Reveal Analyzer can be used, debug cores must first be added using Reveal Inserter. There are two ways Reveal Inserter can be launched. The first way, is to select the Reveal Inserter icon from Radiance Toolbar, as can be seen from the figure on the slide. The second way to launch Reveal Inserter, is to select tools from Radiance Menu Bar, and then Reveal Inserter from the drop-down list of options. Once it has opened, the left side of the Reveal Inserter window should look similar to the figure on the slide. This section of the Inserter window, is used to add debug cores for a project. Up to 15 debug cores can be added to a project, however, most designs typically only require one or two. It is only recommended that more debug cores are used for projects with multiple clocking regions. Additionally, it is also important to remember that reveal cores are implemented using actual hardware resources, so more debug cores will also use more of an FPGA's overall resources. With that said, there are two types of debug cores that can be added using Reveal Inserter. The first type of debug core, Logic Analyzer, is used to create the conditions for observing signals during a debugging session. The second type of core, Controller, has several uses, and can be used to control and observe signals using virtual LEDs and switches, access a project's memory spaces, or read and write to the control registers of the hard IP in a project. To add a debug core, select the Add Core section in Reveal Inserter, as can be seen from the figure on the slide. From the drop-down that appears, select the type of core you want to add. Once a debug core has been created for a project, it will appear under the Data Sets section of this window. One important thing to remember, is that there can only be one controller core for each debug configuration. There is no limit to the number of debug cores in a project, aside from the cap of 15 overall debug cores. With that said, we are now going to review the different types of reveal debug cores in a little more depth. Once a core has been added, the content in the right side of the Reveal Inserter window will be updated. The first type of debug core we are going to discuss, are Logic Analyzer cores. Once a Logic Analyzer core has been added, the right side of the window should look like the figure on the slide. As can be seen from the figure, Logic Analyzer cores have two configuration tabs. The Trace Signal Setup tab, is used to select signals that are observed by the Logic Analyzer core, and the Trigger Signal Setup tab is used to configure the conditions for signal analysis. The first thing users should do, is configure the trace signals for their debug session. To begin adding a trace signal, drag a signal from the left side of the inserter window to the trace section. If a signal was successfully added, a TC will appear next to its name, indicating that it is a trace signal. The settings in the bottom half of this window, are used to control how the trace signals are captured. Once the trace signals have been added for a logic analyzer core, the next step is to configure the trigger conditions, using the Trigger Signal Setup tab. As can be seen from the figure on the slide, the Trigger Signal Setup tab has two main sections. The top half of the window is used to add trigger units for a debugging session. Trigger units are logical expressions, that are used to evaluate specific signals in a design. 
To add a trigger unit, drag a signal from the design tree area into the signal section. Once a signal has been added, define the conditions for its logic analysis using the operator, radix, and value fields. A trigger unit can either be true or false, and will return a Boolean value depending on the logical expression. The bottom half of the window is used to set up trigger expressions. Trigger expressions are used to implement more complex logic for signal analysis, and can reference trigger units as constants using their names. As can be seen from the example on the slide, the trigger expression TE1 will be true when the trigger units TU1 and TU2 are both true. If a trigger expression is true, then the trace signals will be captured, and can be used for signal analysis. The second type of debug core we are going to discuss, are controller cores. When a controller core is added, the right side of the reveal inserter window should look like the figure on the slide. As can be seen from the figure, the controller core setup window has three tabs. The first tab is called virtual switch and LED setup, and can be seen from the figure on the screen. In this tab, users can define signals to be used as virtual switches and LEDs. Virtual LEDs are used to observe signals within a design, and virtual switches are used to control a signal. To add a signal as a virtual switch or LED, drag its name from the design tree area to the list of switches or LEDs. Once it has been added, the address and width fields at the top of the window will automatically be updated. If users do not want to use a virtual switch or a virtual LED, they can disable them using the checkboxes at the top of the window. Once a design is programmed onto a device, users will be able to control and observe these signals using Reveal Analyzer. The next controller tabs we are going to discuss are the User Register Setup and Hard IP Setup tabs. The User Register Setup tab can be used to monitor a design's memory. As can be seen from the figure on the slide, the User Register Setup tab contains six signals, all of which are mandatory. To add signals in this tab, drag the name of a signal from the design tree area to the correct port. The maximum data width for the signals in this tab is 32 bits. As signals are added, the address and data width fields at the top of the window will automatically be updated. If users do not want to configure users register access for their debugging session, they can disable this feature using the checkbox at the top of the window. The last controller core tab we are going to discuss is the hard IP setup tab. The purpose of the hard IP setup tab is to allow users to read and write to the hard IP in their project after it has been programmed. By default, Reveal will infer the manageable hard IP of a project from its RTL code. Now that we've discussed the basics of Reveal's debug cores, we are going to briefly review the process for adding debug cores to a project. Before adding the cores to a project, users should first perform a design rule check on their cores to ensure there will be no issues with them after they are implemented. This is important because after debug cores are added, the project will have to be synthesized, mapped, and placed and routed again, so any design issues will hinder this process. To perform a DRC on the debug cores in Reveal Inserter, use the DRC icon, as can be seen from the figure on the slide. Once users are finished configuring the debug cores and have successfully performed a design rule check, the final step is to add the debug cores to the actual project. To insert the debug cores to the active implementation of a project, use the Insert Debug icon. This will open an additional window asking users to specify which cores to insert, as can be seen from the figure on the slide. Users should ensure that the active reveal file and design project option is enabled, otherwise the selected debug cores will not be active in the project's implementation when they are added. Once users have selected which cores to insert, they should click the OK button to finish inserting the cores. Now that we've discussed the process for adding debug cores to a project, we are going to quickly review some of the basics for managing them. When a .rvl reveal inserter configuration file is added to a project's implementation, it will be saved to the debug files folder in the file list tab. This file contains all the settings that were specified for each debug core, and also controls whether or not the debug cores are active within a project's implementation. If this file is inactive when a project's process flow is run, users will not be able to debug their design, as the debug cores won't be added if the file is inactive. With that said, if users do not want to include debug cores for their project, they can do so by setting the .rvl file as inactive. 
To set this file as inactive, right-click it and select Set as inactive from the drop-down list of options that appears. That concludes this section of the introductory training series. To view the next video in the chapter, select the video titled Section 6.4, Debugging with Reveal Analyzer and Controller.